Hi guys, it is a soggy wet day here in the end times. Good Lord, as we head underwater here in the Finger Lakes on this gloomy gray Sunday, July 11th, 2021. Let's all say happy birthday to Brother Alistair. I have no idea if Alistair is having a birthday party here or not. If anyone has heard from Alistair, Tell him to call Hambone, please. And of course, as I've already mentioned elsewhere on the dark web today, of course we all know what July 11th is, and we cannot let, obviously, I cannot let this pass. It is, of course, the most well-known day in the world. It is World Population Day. I mean, obviously, you know this already. So I was going to go through the mainstream media to share some of the headlines about World Population Day and about how overpopulation being the number one most important story on the planet. But guys, I just had overload. I, I mean, I am so, good God, where do you start? I, I, I mean, the biggest story on the planet, the top five stories on the planet. Uh, you know, I, I went to some nursery today and on the, and on the TV and there on CNN, uh, they were talking about overpopulation and world population day. I stopped in at some bar in Fox News there was Tucker Carlson talking about overpopulation and World Population Day. And my God, I just, there's so many people. I, I'm, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about World Population Day. I mean, what can I add to uh, the deluge of, uh, of news stories out there about the single most important day of the year, World Population Day? But since I know you're sick and tired of hearing the subject of World Population Day, I'm sure Kevin at Black Bear News, I'm sure he's covering that. I'm sure Sandy is covering it. I'm quite sure Dude is talking about it. Paul Beckworth, Beckwith, Beckworth, what's that guy's name? I'm mixing up Paul's name with a forest fire in uh, California. Have you seen that? fucking Beckworth fire out there in California. My God, I hear that thing three hours ago. What did they say? 60,000 acres. Uh, but anyway, so we're just going to play around on the mainstream media to kill time. I was hoping to be building my uh, kitchen today. But obviously, we will not be having any construction projects. So let's just go over to, uh, let's just pick out three. Uh, we're going to start out in the LA Times. Unrecognizable Lake Mead, a lifeline for water in Los Angeles and the West tips toward crisis. Good God, I mean... Looks like the Colorado River is returning. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I think we get it. Uh, after years of an unrelenting drought that has quickly accelerated amid record temperatures and snowpack pack melt, the lake is set to mark yet another more dire turning point. Next month, the federal government expects to declare its first ever shortage on the lake, triggering cuts to water delivered to Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico if the lake drops 28 more feet uh, by next year. The spigot of water to California will start to tighten in 2023. Uh, 
Anyway, we've been, you know, I remember doing this same story when I was first starting out here on Humpty Dumpty Drive, and then, of course, the rains came out of nowhere. I wish we could shift a little bit of this deluge that is waterlogging my apple trees and overflowing my pond. Uh, I assure you my pond does not look like Lake Mead, my overflowing pond. All right. From the No Shit Sherlock, we are so fucked. Story of the week from good old NBC News. We have a wake-up call. It's the same wake-up call. When did I start this wake-up call? I guess about five years ago. Uh, NBC News has finally caught up with him on Little Dale. A wake-up call. One of the world's largest oil pipelines might be in trouble. No shit, Sherlock. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline, <clears throat> one of the world's largest oil pipelines, could be in danger. Thawing permafrost threatens to undermine the supports holding up an elevated section of the pipeline jeopardizing its structural integrity and raising the potential of an oil spill in a delicate and remote landscape. The slope of permafrost where an 810 foot section of the pipeline is secured has started to shift as it falls causing several of the braces holding up the pipeline to twist and bend. There you go. Uh, this is a wake-up call. Yeah, said Carl Weimer from the Pipeline Safety Trust. The implications of this speak to the pipeline's integrity and the effect climate change is having on pipeline safety in general. Yep, yep, yep. I did not realize that permafrost covers nearly 85% of Alaska where permafrost temperatures have warmed as much as three and a half degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and the state's average temperature is projected to increase two deg to four degrees more by the middle of the century. Do the math here, guys. Uh, Michelle Egan, a spokeswoman for Alyeska, an association, an association of oil companies, declined to talk about the condition of the weakened section of pipe or the extent of permafrost thawing. Yep, yep, yep. How many oil spills? There have been 18 oil spills on the pipeline in the last 20 years. Uh, yeah. Good Lord. Uh, anyway, this goes on and on. Uh, You can understand the consequences, but now well, we're going to talk about like in post-apocalyptic movies, heat wave killed marine wildlife in mass, which is the which really is the number one story on the planet from the New York Times. We're going to cover that at Collapse Chronicles tomorrow, but we're going to. Uh, finish out the balance of today's rant with a request by Sancho Panza. 
Sancho Panza is a avid reader of the mainstream media news and uh, he called my attention to this story from the Telegraph over there in London. Nightmare scenario, potentially untreatable superbug being passed from dogs to owners. Are you passing me an untreatable superbug? Am I sticking your damn tongue in my mouth? You know, the thing about Sancho, he really is not an ass licker. Uh, he doesn't lick his own butt. He very rarely licks his own dick, even though he can. Uh, and I've never seen Sancho Panza licking his butthole. I've never once witnessed this dog in five years licking his ass. Uh, he's not bad about sniffing other dogs' asses. I guess Sancho Panza is just not an ass man, which might be saving my life, I guess, that Sancho Panza does not lick his butt. <clears throat> A potentially untreatable superbug is being harbored by ass-licking dogs and passed on to their owners, new research has revealed. Scientists are warning of a, quote, nightmare scenario after discovering the transmission of a gene. I did not know that genes could be transferred from one body to another, much less one species to another. I thought genes got transferred through fucking. Anyway, apparently I, uh, you know, I was just commenting yesterday that I know nothing about genetics and genetic hardwiring. I had no idea that a dog could pass a gene to a human. Uh, it is, we are living in the twilight zone. Scientists are warning of a nightmare scenario after discovering transmission of a gene known to prompt resistance to a powerful antibiotic used by doctors as a last resort to save lives, sharing beds with dogs, sharing your bed with your dog, is just one of the ways they believe the MCR1 gene is being passed on. It is harbored in the dog's gut and transported, transported via microscopic fecal particles. Yes, also making dog baskets an area of increased risks. Not sure what a dog basket is. First reported in China, the MCR1 gene is resistant to colistin, an antibiotic used to defeat bacterial infections which cannot be managed by any other drug. For years, experts have warned that overuse of colistin, particularly on meat-producing animals, risks the rise of mutant genes that could render the drug useless in humans. It is part of a growing crisis of antimicrobial resistance which is already estimated to kill 700,000 people every year globally and which is forecast to kill 10 million people per year by 2050 if left unchecked. Uh, well, we will see if there's 10 million people left to kill uh, by this. So they're talking in less than 30 years, antimicrobial resistance will be killing every year two and a half times as many people as the corona panic has allegedly, supposedly killed since it began. Uh, 
Although the gene is believed to be carried by multiple species, scientists are particularly worried about its presence in domestic dogs because of their proximity to humans. Yes, are you proximate to me? Uh, so in a study of 126,000 people and 102 dogs, Eight of the dogs and four humans were found to be harboring uh, bacteria, including MCR1. Uh, three of the dogs appeared to be healthy. Yes. Analysis suggests a gene was passed from the dog to the owner although it is just as possible to transmit it from humans to the dogs. Yes, I can do, I, I can transmit this gene to you as well as you can transmit it to me. I would stay away from my microscopic fecal particles if I were you, dog. Yes. If bacteria resistant to all drugs acquire the, this resistance gene, they would become untreatable. We know that the overuse of antibiotics drives resistance, and it is vital that they are used responsible, responsibly. Oh, yes. Uh, There you go. Good God, this goes on and on and on. Uh, what is the final line uh, about the potential health risks when feeding raw diets to pets and the manufacture of dog food, blah, blah, blah. Quote, Dog owners should always wash their hands with soap and water right after handling pet food and after picking up feces. Yes, picking up feces. Anyway, now that you're completely grossed out, I'm going to wrap up this rant, and uh, I think it's safe to say I am, there will be no picking party. I was hoping to have a picking party start here in about 10 minutes. Don't think that's going to happen. So, uh, Alistair, would you please call me? Let me know if your birthday party is on. Alistair's birthday party will be somewhere in Ithaca, New York, tomorrow evening. Uh, if you live anywhere n near Ithaca, New York, and want to join us at Alistair's birthday party, which is supposed to happen tomorrow evening at some restaurant in Ithaca, let me know and I will give you the details. Come join us. Say bye, your little killer dog. Bye, guys. Get your feces butt out of my face, please. <laughs>